compromised or the lack thereof. And we're talking about compromise because a lot of it has to do with politics right now. And well, as everybody knows, there's three houses to the government: the Democrats, excuse me, yeah. I should say the Democrats, Republicans. It's the Democrats, Republicans, and Tea Party. Actually, it's. It is the, it is the House of Representatives. No, there's three branches of government. There is the legislative, the judicial, and the executive. The um, president of the United States controls two out of he controls um, three quarters of of everything. He controls the presidency, the judiciary, and the Senate. Well, I'm just thinking of the House of Representatives, Senate, and the executive branch. Yeah, but there's actually four branches that are involved in this. The judiciary is going to be where it's going to end up with. Because no matter what deal That's where it gets enforced. No matter what deal that is passed, Obama is going to have the Justice Department challenge it in court because he's not going to allow he's going to say it's against the against the constitution. He uses the constitution only when it serves his purpose. Otherwise, he finds things in it that are unconstitutional. So, but um, the part so, of it the reason we're talking about compromise is in the president's address last night, um, or speech. There was no compromise in that. It, it basically, it was an election campaign speech was against the law. The Republicans are preparing to pay for Bonnier's five minutes of time to soliciting donations privately because they basically want to be able to say, well, we're prepared to pay for Bonnier's speech and rebuttal to yours. Mm -hmm. But the president has to pay, the law goes, he has to pay the lowest price, the lowest prime time price per minute. For a campaign, campaign speech. For a campaign speech, and it was a campaign speech. Just to give no, you know, my, I, you know, the Democrats have been responsible, the Tea Party are anarchists, you know, I, 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 I. There was no... No hint of compromise whatsoever. Compromise is when two people, okay, basically, it's when you piss off both sides and come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. That's compromise. Well, actually, I, see, part of it is, I think the president's idea of compromise is like what your Cynthia's idea of compromise was. Oh, yeah. Well, what's her idea of compromise? Um, she got everything her way. <laughs> or she kicked me in the shin. I have a permanent problem with my left leg because it, she'd jump up, you know, she's smaller than I me. Mean, she was much smaller than I me. Mean, she'd just jump up and kick me there. And I would give in. She never had to kick me. I would have gave in anyway. It was just, you know, she's German. <laughs> and actually, and, and we're going to be, we're going to get very racist right now. She was a Jap. Mm -hmm. That's called a Japanese American princess because her father was German Jew and her mother. And was she Japanese. was also a Jewish American princess too. Yeah, so she called. She liked to say, "I'm a Jap" because her mother was from Japan. So I am a Japanese American princess. Princess meaning Jew. So, but um, her, that was her idea of compromise. Um, I would go out with her and she'd spend my money. She never spent her money. I mean that was it. We just go to we go but we go out to buy. Oh, don't you think this is nice? And I say yes. And then I sit there and I talk to the salespeople. Well, aren't you interested? And we said no because she's gonna buy whatever she wants to buy to begin with. Oh, well, didn't you want compromise? I would have loved compromise. I mean, it would have been nice because she never spent a penny of her money for anything. You know, other than if it was something very big she wanted, she spent her money. So, so do you think like the president's relationship with Congress is like one of a marriage? Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, he, he's the wife in the family and the wife actually runs. Okay, here the trick is, he is an uh, Afro-American male, which he really isn't. But in Afro-American families, the woman runs the, runs the marriage. Which, which means Michelle runs him and he runs the country. So, yeah. but um, he's treating, you know, like the, the males are irresponsible. The males are not doing it. Uh, no. uh, Obama's idea of compromise is to put his party out on a limb and cutting that limb off slowly behind him. As they creep forward, he cuts a little bit more until they finally get to where the cut is, and then he goes, Whack! And then, like, say uncle. Yeah, he, he, he's known for throwing his, throwing his supporters under the wheels of the bus. Mm -hmm. They reached a compromise that neither, neither house liked, neither house put... The Republicans only had to come up with um, with um, 40 votes out of the 200 and some. The two. It's actually not that many. No, it's but there's one. that many people. Okay, there only a hundred, only 80 some of the people were Tea Party people, which meant that they were. It was easily going to be able to come up with the 40 votes, and then 
because it didn't actually cut any spending, Nancy Pelosi would easily be able to do it. You know, she'd say, well, we, we, we got the best of the Republicans again when it comes to the fall election. We got mm -hmm. the best of them again. You know, they, they bit that this were going to cut spending. Mm -hmm. You know, we got, the spend, we got the increase in government. You know, they, we increased the government by 10 to 15 percent. They didn't get anything. And we got everything we wanted but increased taxes, and we are going to get increased taxes because bond your promise to, um, to going to do, trying to fix the tax problems. So, which means they were going to get uh, probably 800 billion. They said the Bonyard plan called for 800 million dollars over the next 10 years in getting rid of. But see, the problem is it also got rid of the loopholes for all those favorite Democratic Party things, you know, like which is a thousand dollars a ticket for a passenger subsidy for airplanes in Podunk, Iowa. What are you talking about? Okay, the federal government subsidizes airports where they only have four or five people flying a month out of. You know, oh, at a thousand dollars a day, mm -hmm. and they subsidize uh, Amtrak, which nobody's using, which should be a private service. They subsidize the post office does not accept one penny of federal money. Yeah. Who in the world ever said that? That's that's what they're saying. We receive no federal money. They get lots of federal. I money. was gonna say that. Uh, yeah, and they're basically going to cut those things and make these business, make these companies run all on their own. We know which they should be doing, which is funny. When it serves the Democratic Party's purpose, they're all for, uh, you know, American private enterprise. If it doesn't serve their purpose, they don't want private enterprise. But to get rid of these things that they can say that we've cut, they just got to stop funding them, you know, because there's no money. But isn't that? It's, I mean, it's self-serving because they've got a different agenda. Their agenda is uh, okay. I, okay, my mother was a Democrat, my father was a Republican, my grand, my, my grandparents were both, you know, my, my, mother, my grandmother was a Republican, my grandfather was a, a, a Democrat, because my grandmother liked it, my grandmother was a member, she really was a member of the original IRA folks, she just liked it, and she was a mean little German, little, you know, little Irish girl, about like that tall, yeah. but um, their idea of compromise was my grandmother, would say, I, I think you should do exactly as I say you're going to do, and I have a shillelagh to make certain that you do as I think you should do. And my grandmother would go to the polling booth with her shillelagh and just hit it on top of a can as people would come to vote Republican. Mm -hmm. They didn't vote, they just left. Mm -hmm. I told you my family, a lot of family from Cicero, I always want to it. But um, that was her idea compromise at a voting booth. She sat there and pound a shillelagh on a, on a about a 50 gallon drum. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, you know, I am. Um, but uh, right now, uh, we, we're talking about people, all you got to do is go back and look at the, at the, uh, the, I think it's the Missouri Compromise that, um, that, that Daniel Webster, of Daniel Webster, the devil fame, and, and John C. Calhoun formed to basically preserve the Union for about 30 years. It kept, they knew that a war was coming but they didn't think the country was going to be able to handle it mm -hmm. then. So they both, but they, they created like the line that above this point you couldn't be uh, slaves, below this point you could continue the old world because what Webster and Clay both knew was that cotton gin had basically wiped out slavery. Because, I mean, uh, they said, well, it caused slavery. Yeah, but they then created a cotton picker. To go because they, they couldn't, they couldn't, okay, slavery was prohibited. You no longer bring slaves into the country by this time. So uh, what happened was they, there wasn't enough people to be able to feed the cotton gin, which uh, Eli Whitney invented. Uh, actually, Eli Whitney also invented, the, the, you know, the interchangeable parts that we basically use in all of our machines today, you know, handguns, automobiles, that is a circle fact, but... Um, Slavery was on the downhill when the Great Compromise was passed. What they did was they made, uh, I think they made Missouri a slave state and dumped a state to the south of the line as a free state, which was weird. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never could understand. But that was the compromise that the two had got together. The, the uh, people, the northern politicians hated it. The southern politicians hated it. Like in the, in the words of Monty Python, everybody hated the life of Brian, so it must have been one hell of a good movie. <laughs> They, they basically pissed off everybody.
That's, Which was their intention. Yeah, but that means you've done your job. If you pass, a, you know, a good piece of legislation that is passed is a piece of legislation that absolutely no one likes. No one. That includes the people that wrote it. And you say, well, no one likes the, um, the no one likes Obamacare. The people on the left love Obamacare because they, as they have said repeatedly, it's a start. So no matter what you might hear, the people that are complaining are not the people on the left in the Democratic Party. Other than the fact that they wanted it to go farther, but they also know that basically now it's already there, and um, they think that they can hold the presidency and stuff so they can keep it going. But remember, there was no compromise over a. There's been no compromise over anything this president has done since the day he stepped into office. Well, actually, part of it is. <laughs>